Hey, what's up guys, Arava here, and welcome back to the episode of my F1 2019 career mode, episode number 8 today for the Canadian Grand Prix. If you guys did miss the previous one, the Monaco GP, then I highly recommend you go check that one out, because it was an absolute madness here. The craziest ra uh, race result we've had so far, and just the craziest race, really, really action-packed and really, really good, as, uh, you know, not just as Monaco goes, as races go in general for career mode. But we come to Montreal then, and uh, what did I say? I thought one uh, upgrade would fail, and it's the engine upgrade, actually, out of all of them, so we don't have have that minor engine power coming to the car but we do have the two bits of downforce and the chassis weight reduction coming to the car so that'll be still pretty good you know the weight reduction will help in acceleration terms mid corner and also we get the minor upgrade on rear downforce and another one on front but we're gonna have to repurchase that engine upgrade at some point later on but Montreal Canada is always has been always consistently one of my favorite circuits on the F1 games to drive has always been a good one that I go at as well so I'm looking forward to this one coming off the back of a really good result at Monaco as well well, I think the momentum is with us and the team and looking forward to it. And Canada does look very sweet this year because they have remodeled it somewhat with the new uh, kind of the new pit lane uh, kind of complex, if you will, uh, with the new building and whatnot. They completely revamped it in real life in Canada and that uh, shows the same thing in the game there. So it's looking very lovely indeed as we're looking forward to this one. Obviously it goes without saying, but we did the usual practice programs and whatnot to try and get the max R&D as well as we continue to try and develop the car. But with that done in the background, let's just go ahead and get straight into qualifying and hit the track with some anger. Hello and welcome from the circuit Gilles Villeneuve, home to the Canadian Grand Prix for today's qualifying session. When it comes to getting lap time out of this circuit, it's traditionally been about maximizing top speed. Do you simply remove as much downforce as possible Hang on into the corners and max out down the straights. The teams will have arrived with all manner of parts designed to capitalise on the long straights. The cars will be that much harder to drive in the corners, but everyone will be in the same boat. So on our flying lap in Q1, I think our car should go pretty well around here. You know, in theory, good straight line speed. We're now also added a decent amount of downforce to the car. You can see get, uh, getting a little bit too hot into turn one, though, that time round on this first fly there, so might need to gain some more time on a second flying lap as we go through the last turn through the War Champions across the line. P12 it is at the moment, but uh, like I suspected, a little bit slow on that first run after losing too much time in the opening turn, taking a lot more curb on the inside and just uh, taking the corner a little bit better through turns two as well and getting the exit a lot, better, a lot more nailed. And so as we go down the line, gaining a few more tenths and we're up into P8 and that should get us through comfortably into Q2 and Raikkonen there looking good. So P8 and P11, obviously it's hard to tell the pace in Q1 because so many other teams are running mediums, maybe teams aren't pushing as hard uh, but looking okay for where we were kind of pretty much in Monaco was, which was of course P10 and P11 uh, as it was before I got the grid penalty in Monaco so hopefully we can try and match that basically around here. Obviously it is a different circuit but like I said on paper we've got all the tools to maybe do it but it's just about trying to put the lap together so here we go chucking it through the last chicane there trying to avoid the wall on the exit. A little bit of a twitch of oversteer but we do fine and we're going to stick to the right hand side the shortest run to the line across the line and we're up into p3 as it is right now in the session eventually that'll be down to p8 but we make it through into q3 for the second time in a row in this career mode raikkonen is out though but the gap isn't too big actually so again the midfield fight really quite close here in f1 just like in real life there you know the difference is only what two tenths there and from raikkonen to p10 is one tenth so it's so so close in this uh, midfield scrap it's great to see that just like real life it's like that uh, but it just means that obviously if you do make a mistake you can get really punished for it and Raikkonen does make it through into Q3 but we do but it's very overcast right now and that's making the track quite difficult to drive you can maybe I don't know tell that I'm going a little bit slower than maybe I was in Q2 because the track that has definitely got a little bit colder and just felt I wasn't feeling as fast in Q3 here so the lap time really might not be there to be honest so the clock never lies here so we'll just see how it goes as we cross the line but I think we might need a second lap here in Q3 to really try and improve quite a fair bit but the reason why it's so overcast is because there is some rain on the way at the end of the session so we'll have to see how that affects things here but we have two new sets of soft tires to use in this session because we only use one in Q2 to get through but we move on to our second flight lap we've gained a decent amount of time in sectors one and two pretty much but as we go towards the end of the lap it is starting to rain now and so that might compromise our line in the chicane on the exit, you know, through the wall of champions being a little bit more cautionary not to kind of stuff it into the wall there, but we do still send it and the car slides around and oh, massive 
Massive save there. We're still going to gain a decent amount of time across the line from P10 up into P8. And so that saves our qualifying there. So despite making a mistake and going slower in the last sector, we get enough time in the previous ones to get up into P8. A brilliant qualifying for us ahead of both Renault cars. We're beaten by the Racing Point car. Uh, fair play by, by Sergio Perez. Obviously the Mercedes engine in the back of his car working well there. Lewis Hamilton on pole. So finally showing up maybe in this season. Hamilton is. But really happy to beat the two Renaults because they are uh, ahead of us on paper on the R&D. But of course, I think their engine is probably letting them down this race, I would say. Um, so looking forward to this race now from P8 and also Raikkonen. And I reckon he has more potential on the car potentially in the race as well. So looking forward to this one. Should be a good one. Let's get into the race, which should be pretty clear with no rain whatsoever. So I think it should be a pretty good one for us. We're back once again beside the St. Lawrence River here in Montreal for the Canadian Grand Prix. The event first moved to a variant of this track back in 1978. It was won by none other than Gilles Villeneuve, the first Canadian to ever win his home race and in whose honour the circuit would be renamed. We'll be seeing top speeds of around 210 miles an hour here at the circuit Gilles Villeneuve with around two thirds of the lap taken at full throttle. High speed chicanes spell potential danger, especially at the infamous Wall of Champions. And watch out for overtaking into the hairpin and the final chicane. Joining us today to oversee all the thrills and spills, it's Anthony Davidson. And great to see you. How are you feeling about the race today? And how are the circuit conditions from what you've seen? Well, the surface looks clean enough, but I'm a little bit worried about the track temperature. It's pretty cool out there, which could give some teams difficulties when it comes to keeping their tyres in the right operating window. The cars out there that work their tyres hard and really put a lot of energy through them, they'll be the ones that are better off. Off the back of a fantastic qualifying session, it's time to see how our starting grid looks for today's race. An immense lap from Lewis Hamilton yesterday puts him on pole position, with Sebastian Vettel starting alongside. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Leclerc, Bottas, Max Verstappen, and Gasly, Perez, the engineer, Hulkenberg, and Daniel Ricciardo, Magnussen, Stroll, Kimi Raikkonen, and Faber, Grosjean, Russell, Devon Butler, and Carlos Sainz, Albon, and Lando Norris starts from the back of the grid. And now it's time to head down to the track. Right, so here we are on the Montreal grid and looking ahead towards the strategy. Now, I actually forgot to mention that I qualified actually in Q2 on a set of medium tyres and got through there to my surprise. I had some really good pace in Q2, which kind of shows up kind of a lack of pace I had in Q3 with the track getting colder. And so therefore, we have to start on those tyres. But I thought that would have been a really good thing for us because it would have opened up a potential one-stop. But apparently, the tyre wear is so high for our car here that uh, we have a two-stop and a three-stop recommended for us. The three-stop looks looks really odd um, using all three compounds. So I don't know if there's been some kind of weird glitch with the strategy or whatnot, but uh, apparently a two-stop is the way to go here for us today. Two sets of mediums, and then instead of hards, which is kind of odd, I would have thought maybe you could do a, a soft to two mediums uh, if you were to start on the soft tile, or vice versa for us, maybe two sets of mediums and then a soft. So a um, bit of an unknown. So I don't know what's going up on with that, but uh, I guess we'll just kind of see what that will mean for us in the race, but kind of like Monaco, we're going to have to see how it goes and just play it by what we're feeling with the car. But let's just get into this then and try and go ahead from our P8 slot as we go to five red lights then here today for the Canadian Grand Prix. Round number seven of the season. Lights are out and we're on the way and it's initially good start, but then of course being bogged down with the medium tyre versus the soft tyres. The guys around me have a much better start. Holcomer with a massive dive to the inside. Nearly makes contact with Sergio Perez. I apparently did make contact with Dan Ricciardo behind him, even though I didn't really see him too much there, but he squeezed him out apparently and made contact in doing so. But now we're down the inside of his teammate Holcomb, we're trying to get the position back that we lost at the race start, and we oh, just about make that through. Little love tap on the DHL uh, sponsoring wall there, and we get through into uh, that position. So just about get back ahead on the two Renault cars, but losing some traction on the exit of that next corner. So it might be under pressure from Holkenberg and also the Haas of Magnussen in the background. Ricardo also is nearly a part of that fight. Up ahead of us, though, there's a massive fight going on with Pierre Gasly who loses a heap of time there in the Red Bull car Sergio Perez trying to go around his outside there so Gasly once again we find a Red Bull car a little bit slow Monaco was Verstappen getting held up in traffic and now we can see Gasly under pressure here Verstappen's actually not too far ahead of course the Red Bull cars maybe aren't, aren't going to be so good in a straight line we saw in the real life Canadian Grand Prix Gasly struggled against the Racing Point cars and so maybe we can try and join the party because Perez is past Pierre Gasly so could we make an overtake on the Frenchman nice and easy to the last corner because don't want to 
get too hot uh, under the collar there, trying to send one too early. And also, usually, you can get a much better exit and try and make a move on the main straight. This time, though, Gasly didn't actually make a move to try and re-overtake Perez like I thought he might have done. And so we move on to lap number two, and instead, I'm under pressure, massive pressure, by Kevin Magnussen, who's overtaken Hulkenberg and is now attacking me. Down the inside he goes. We leave him the space, though, on the inside there, and we're able to keep the position for now, but he's still there on the outside. It's a fantastic move, actually, to be fair to him by Magnussen to keep it around there, because I would have probably backed out that by now, because that was so close to the wall. But we're going to come back at him straight away on the back straight here. No DRS remember on lap two, just pure slipstream. And down the inside of the chicane, it's going to be very fine margins for the wall of champions, and we are drifting through on the exit there, getting the power on a little bit too early with a bit of a slide in the rear end. We make it work, and we maintain this PA position, but Gasly now is getting away from us because of all this fighting, and there's going to be more fighting, because I'm just so bad off that right handed this is on the kind of back straight here with the second DRS zone now at Canada on the circuit now that they've added in and so Magnussen is uh, really hounding me as well as the Renault cars and so this is a real issue for me and the pace is just lacking there and now we're three wide because Magnussen dives me and Ricardo dives me on the other side. we need to get pinched in and touch both their side pods at the same time because both of them are literally creating a V shape and pinching me into the apex there that was crazy stuff and so Ricardo Magnussen is getting very aggressive with me and maybe getting frustrated at the bottleneck that I'm creating but I, I'm, I'm trying to do my best job but uh, trying to go through and try and catch Gasly but I've just got no pace at the moment we have to switch move on Ricardo there went nice and easy on the entry fast on the exit out of the chicane and get back on the Aussie man to the inside of turn one squeeze him out and now we have to try and chase after Magnussen hopefully try and re-overtake him but yeah baffling amount of uh, lack of pace at the moment here I thought we could have, would have gone really well you know after that really great uh, qualifying where we qualified into Q3 on medium tyres. Uh, you know, I didn't make, I didn't mention it at the time because I kind of actually forgot about it. But that was a really mega job by us. But now in the race. No pace, it would seem. No pace. And then as we move on, uh, lap number six, we're actually going to tell Jeff to shut up right now on our team radio because I actually was having audio issues with my engineer. Now, on the recording, you might be able to hear him, but for some reason on my computer, I couldn't hear Jeff properly. Like, he was cutting out a lot, and I basically couldn't hear him at all. And so I had no info around me of what was happening in the race. So a very, very odd situation. So it's almost like a, in real life, you have a, a, like an electrical fault with the radio. You can't hear your team radio guy. Basically, I just told him to shut up because there's no point in him talking if I can't even hear him. Him, and it was muting the engine audio. I'd rather hear my upshifts. So that was uh, very, very odd. Uh, and just a bit of a weird situation to add on to the fact that I had also no pace, which was also kind of alarming me a bit. And so now, once again, finding ourselves under pressure from another car in that second sector. And this time it's Lance Stroll, the home favourite, the Canadian in the Racing Point car. So Magnussen has pretty much completely dropped us at this point here after we had a bit of a squabble with him and Ricardo. We go defensive against Stroll, try and push him wide. But again, yeah, I don't know what it is. Maybe the medium tyres just aren't the tyre to be on. Maybe they're not the race tire to be on and the soft tire is actually quite a good race tire because these guys are all doing a lot better than me at the moment I'm kind of need needing their tires to go off the cliff very quickly now but as we try and now get past Lance Stroll Rio we're taking around the outside it's a very aggressive move there over the sausage curb and just don't make it two by two there but can't quite pull off the move that was a, a very ballsy attempt around the outside and now it's Lucas Weber in the Williams car uh, my former F2 teammate who's going to be behind me now so he might be the one that pressurized me Lance Stroll waltzes away from me and you can see on the minimap there the gap he's got already in just uh, two laps time that is lap eight to lap nine now so three laps effectively fully and uh, Stroll's really got away from me so I've got no pace I don't know what on earth's going on right now Bottas just pit has come out ahead of us we're getting now pressurized by Weber as well I don't know what's wrong with this car. It feels like this car is now broken at this moment in time. In lap 9, I, at this moment in time whilst I was racing, I was trying to fight back. But at the same time, I was also just thinking, what's going wrong with this car right now? Because it feels a little bit broken. We keep losing so much time. Now, the ERS has been very tricky to manage. So maybe that's part and parcel of the of the cause. Maybe I'm not using it uh, as uh, you know efficiently as I should be at certain parts of lap. And I'm overusing it in other parts of lap. I'm not too sure. But Weber goes round the outside. Then we're side by side. in this game. We switch back, move on in there. And so it's going to be another another tasty battle with our F2 rival former teammate like I mentioned we've had some great scraps already but had some controversy as well at the Chinese Grand Prix earlier in the season but we're side by side it's a great little battle now going on for half a lap Gasly makes a pit stop and comes ahead of us that just shows how much little or lack of pace we have we were right behind Gasly before just before this race and now he's pit and he's already ahead of us after making that pit stop so he's getting an entire pit stop on us in the matter of not uh, nine laps which is ridiculous really in my in my opinion 
even if the Alfa Romeo car is a lot slower than Red Bull. Still, it, it just feels so slow. And then here, Perez gets past me. He's already made his pit stop, I think, I, I, I reckon, because uh, he was already way ahead of us, I think, in the racing point car. Grosjean comes to overtake us. It's all just going very, very wrong, and I just don't know what to what to do, really. I don't know how, how to explain I'm a passenger in the car right now. I feel like Gassi in real life saying I'm a, passion, a passenger in the car, but I really was in this race. It was almost like I was driving on autopilot. I don't know if you guys have ever got that, but when you get into a race where it kind of starts to fall away from you, you start kind of losing hope and losing kind of concentration of what you're meant to be doing in that race because you, you just don't have any pace. And so I was very much on autopilot, just going through the laps, going through the motions and just losing more pace as a result of that. So uh, we've got Weber attacking me. We've got George Russell in the other Williams close behind me. Kimi's just pit right now on lap 11. Um... Yeah, uh, just truly baffling. We're going to continue on because I wasn't sure what what to do in this race. I didn't know, okay, am I still doing this two-stop? Am I going to try and do a one-stop maybe and try and make it go? Uh, I probably, in hindsight, should have tried to do a one-stop, really. But instead, I come in the same lap as Lucas Weber, side by side into the pit lane there. Thankfully, the car, car goes. Otherwise, that would have been a nasty collision into the pit lane entry, but certainly would have made for a, a very lovely YouTube title, I'm sure. But uh, yeah, um, we come in anyway on that lap because I want to try and match Weber. And basically, we're committing ourselves to the two-stop now by going on to a set of uh, medium tyres again. But I think I might try and go to the soft tyre at the end of this Grand Prix. But we're going to come now down the pit lane. And to my shock, we're going to be in a lowly last place, P19. Because Russell's out of the Grand Prix now. So in 19th place, last place on the grid. Albon's ahead of us. I've not seen in this entire race. I don't know what's happened. We, we've had 14 laps and I've just gone backwards and backwards and backwards. And somehow I've lost about, what's that, nine positions in the span of a couple of laps here. And I'm last place now. So truly baffling. Never thought I'd be in this position following that qualifying. But here we go now. Trying to make up the positions down the inside of Alexander Albon there. It's a nice little move around the outside of turn two to try and get up into P18. So we've got to get on with it and try and make these overtakes. The only good thing is I should be on fresher tyres compared to these guys who pit a lot earlier than I did here. So it's time to attack, roll up the sleeves and recover in this Grand Prix and not go into autopilot too much. Try and you know, slap myself a little bit in the cockpit and wake myself up and get the moves done. Now catching up to the next Toro Rosso of Devin Butler here. Hopefully in a straight line, we should be able to get him. We'll have DRS. We've got some ERS to play around with as well. So overtake mode engaged. No rich mix though, because we don't have too much fuel to burn uh, left for this Grand Prix. But here we go now. Didn't know where to go. Twitching around the steering wheel. Eventually we pick the right-hand side to the inside there. Getting the job done just about. But in the break zone, Butler does come back at us a little bit there. But we finally get it done into the apex of the chicane. Hour up into P17. And now we'll catch up to Ricardo, who's also lost a lot of pace. Both me and Ricardo were like P9 or 10 or 10, 11. And now we're down here in 6. 16th and 17th, so I'm sure Ricardo's just as baffled at what's going on here. I mean, both us and uh, Hulkenberg were in the top 10 in qualifying, and now we're fighting over the wooden spoon here in the back for a lowly P15, and now up ahead of me, Raikkonen has a little look at the Williams car, so hopefully we can try and catch up to him at least, and try and uh, get up into P13 potentially, L uh, Norris in the pit lane there, so we're into P14 already, so I don't know, we're a little bit out of sync as well, the Grand Prix, so maybe I've spoken too soon, maybe we're, we are going to be in okay position perhaps once people make pit stops, but here we go now, Raikkonen side by side with Weber there, and it's a great little tussle there, Weber on the right hand side, the outside corner in the same position Magnussen was in when he overtook me uh, on the previous stint here, but Raikkonen gets the better of the German. We have a little look around the outside, but Lucas squeezes me out on the exit there. But we should be able to get a good run through his straight line. We get a great exit. In fact, I'm pushing him through the corner on the exit. So we'll have DRS open. And now to drag race down the main straight. Can we also get Raikkonen maybe? As Raikkonen's a bit of a sitting duck here now. He's a real sitting duck. And we go through. And we're going to get very aggressively to the apex. Make sure we finish that pass. And we're now up into P12. So actually now, it's not looking too bad. Now in hindsight, we've only lost uh, time to Grosjean and Magnus and who were already losing time to before, but it still was a bit odd. And also, I have to make a second pit stop, so I will lose more time later on. So although I'm climbing up the position even more, once Sainz makes a pit stop and Lance Stroll, remember, I still have to make a stop. They've already made their second stops there, so we will be going down the order, even though right now we're in P9. But for the moment, at least, it's feeling a little bit better than it was previously on that first stint. But onto that 26, then Lance Stroll attacking us, but this is the lap. We're going to come in for that second pit stop, then onto a set of soft tyres. And so, like I said, this is where we go down, back down the order, and we drop back to reality of the fact that, yeah, something's gone wrong in this race, and our car very much is, I feel like it's broken, because I just don't, I still don't understand what's happened here. I, I don't know. 
Like, we're going to have to, look, like, if there was analysis and debrief to do in the career mode, I would be doing all of it because I need to understand, I still don't understand at this point of doing the commentary a few days after I've recorded the race of what on earth happened in this race. But we're on to a set of soft tyres. They're worn soft tyres, but they're still going to be pretty quick, I think. And the first stint showed they're actually pretty okay race tyres. So we come out in P18 then. So second last place on the race. And Raikkonen's only just ahead of me in P17. So both of us alphas qualified, what was it, P8 and P, what was it, 13 or 14? But Raikkonen could have maybe made it into Q3 if he wanted to, maybe. Uh, and now we're, we're, we're way down the order. I, yeah, I just don't know. So we've now got five laps left in this Grand Prix, not including the one we're on currently. And we're trying to catch up to Butler now. Raikkonen's already overtaken him. He's going to go ahead and try and overtake Weber. So uh, it's all kicking off with our F2 rivals here today. As we try and send one to the inside of Devin there. It's a lock up on the front right, but we get it through skating through mid apex there and avoiding any contact with the wall on the exit up into p17 and up ahead look at that raikkonen on the outside of the chicane there can he get it done he's in the inside there he's made some contact with weber and they've lot, lost a lot of momentum there and he gained so much time we're right up there chaff and we're having a good view of this battle now through turns one and two nice side by side stuff and raikkonen will get it through around the outside there great stuff from him really nice overtaking now we'll move on to the hairpin and we're going to try and get weber ourselves with DRS available to us so we can see we're in low fuel though so we need to save some fuel at some point in this race but for now I was a little bit annoyed so I just wanted to continue on and try and push the car flat out for now we'll worry about the fuel later on the last few laps so here we go around the outside it's a very bold move it's a very aggressive move and it's just about just about made uh, but that was on the fine edge of being a bit too aggressive I will fully admit but like I said almost like the Spanish Grand Prix the red mist almost did descend a little bit for me I uh, just peeved off a little bit and I just wanted to overtake him and get to P16 at least we defend against him successfully on the second last half of the Grand Prix until the last though and that will be it for the Grand Prix we almost got lapped by Sebastian Vettel who crossed the line then I'm going to get through Raikkonen P15 on the road P16 for me to say that we finished P3 and P4 at the Monaco Grand Prix this race has been an absolute abysmal disaster and I just don't know what to say about it but there you go you sometimes have those uh, in Formula 1 and it's just uh, sometimes how it is Here's our winner, pulling their Ferrari into Park Fermi. What a fantastic race it was. Talk to me, Ants. What was it that set them apart from the competition today? I really feel the track layout, combined with the track temperatures we saw today, suited their car. These cars come alive when the tyres are just at the right temperature, and the driver did a great job managing that as well. They just look so comfortable out there. It's like anything, it always looks so easy when it all just clicks. Here come our winners now. A thrilling race and a tremendous effort by Ferrari. Their history is well known, so it's no surprise to fans the world over to see them come out on top once again. So yeah, very odd Grand Prix, so both myself and Raikkonen go down the order in the Drivers' Championship. We do stay put, though, in fifth place, to be fair, though. It's actually not horrendous in terms of the championship, uh, constructors-wise. We're still there behind Renault, ahead of Racing Point and Haas, but uh, Drivers' Championship, we lost some uh, some points there, of course. And uh, yeah, just like I said, still baffled at what happened, so I'm going to need to try and understand what happened for Season 2 of the Canadian Grand Prix. Uh, but, I mean, for now, we just have to move on and kind of just try and forget about it, I guess. Good day today. Let's have your take on it. You were neck and neck with Lucas by today's finish. Can we look forward to more of the same? Yeah, obviously it got very, very frosty at the end there, but always happy to put on a show, and that's going to get a bit of a showmanship increase there for us. Do you have any comments about the collision? And I might have said something here, but I thought no comment would probably be the better thing, not get me in any trouble in any kind of way for reputation with the team or anything like that. So just no comment there. Play a bit of a Raikkonen kind of answer. Well... Thanks anyway. So taking some pointers from my teammate uh, in interviews, clearly in the last few episodes, I've been doing no comment here and there. So uh, yeah, it, rub it rubs off, obviously, if you spend that much time with someone in the garage on the racetracks. But anyway, we're going to have to try and now uh, fix the failed engine upgrade. And we're going to go ahead and look at maybe some other purchase potentially. But the engine upgrade will come in uh, handy at the French Grand Prix. But we'll go for the kind of mirror image, if you will, of the rear downforce minor. So trying to keep the car balanced in terms of downforce because I don't want it to have a bit of an unbalanced kind of 
have all front downforce and no rear downforce car, even though the rear is pretty stable in comparison to the front. Uh, I thought I'd go with that minor one, because also it's a minor upgrade versus a major on the front there. And then the chassis-wise, I thought maybe, again, we go for a chassis upgrade, weight reduction, because, you know, sh chassis is an underrated upgrade. It definitely does always help to have a lightweight chassis, because it helps acceleration, and also mid-corner, the car is easier to maneuver around, and also rolling the car through is going to be quicker, because your car is lighter, and that kind of situation as well. Uh, but I was also very, uh, very adamant on doing an upgrade on the aero, and I thought, you know what? Let's just go through drag. I was very hesitant to start doing drag updates because you can see the tree. You have to drill down like three, four levels on drag before getting any more aero updates to this car. But the thing is, drag is a big part of the aero. And it, we can't just keep slapping down downforce because if I cut drag, it does mean I can run higher wings and still have the same straight line speed. So it kind of, you know, it kind of goes swings and roundabouts in terms of like compromise. So I thought, you know what, let's just go for it really. And it might actually help us out in the long run in terms of making overtakes in the race. So yeah, happy with the upgrades we got in in the end there. Uh, so we've got four on the trot. So that's going to be a major weekend at France for us if they all come through uh, without any failures. But guys, if you did enjoy this episode, be sure to smash the like button. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. If you're on your own, do subscribe for weekly Formula 1 content. I've been Aaron for a day. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.